20 minutes after 4 o'clock, Basisane Kumalo is in the building. Her memoir is called My Journey of Hope. Go out and get it. That's if you can find it. Because I went looking and I can't find it. Oh, are you serious? I'm so serious. I went to two different malls, went looking. But now I understand why. Do you want to share with everyone? Well, um, our first print run was 13,000 copies. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the fourth week... Um, since we had launched it, um, my publisher Penguin called mm. to say that uh, we need to go for a second print run. Wow! Um, and um, and it's just been so overwhelming, Tando. How South Africans have received my story, my memoir, my truth. Well, my it's voice. a beautiful story. Um, thank you, thank you so much. It's a, it's a very honest account, mm. candid account mm. of of my life. Um, you know, when I wrote it, I was only going to bear my true soul. Um, the book is very vulnerable. Mm. I go to places, dark places um, of my life that I necessarily didn't want to revisit. But then I realized that it was important for me to revisit that so that I could be able to process and find my place of healing. And and, and writing my journey of hope has truly been cathartic. Mm. Um, I, can, I can say to you without a shadow of a doubt, I walk unburdened. Wow. I've owned wow. my voice. Wow. Wow. And there's power in owning your voice and owning your story and telling our own stories. I think you have to be so brave to be able to bear your soul, to be able to read back to yourself your own voice. And what I loved most about it is that the whole book is written really on the backdrop of apartheid essay and there's a part in which um you won miss south africa and it's at a time where well i mean there was one before you but it's at a time where you were now living in an era that you weren't born in and it was understanding the hour of my winning in 1994 and the responsibility mm. of uh, the crown um i had to represent um, what a black girl child can achieve. Mm. Um, the reign is only 12 months. What was critical for me was what I was going to do with my life post the reign. Was that and burdensome just during the reign? It, it was daunting. I was a 20 year old mm. um, that lived a sheltered life. Um, I came fresh out of uh, uni. Um, I was doing my third year um, of study at the University of Venda studying towards mm. a teacher's degree. And so here you are thrust into the limelight. Um, it's 1994, South Africa is on the world stage. Mm. Um, it's a new dispensation, it's a new government, mm. it's Madiba's rainbow people. Yes. And, and so to have to play a significant role as an ambassador of a new nation um, was quite daunting. But then I soon realized that I need to get over the, the you know, being overwhelmed yeah. and get on with the business of reigning and rewriting what pageantry uh, and what Miss South Africa is all about. And then you get a call from Nelson Mandela. <laughs> As Miss South Africa to say hello, congratulations. Listen, so Zelda Lakranji, who was Dada's um, assistant, and she gives me this ring and I pick up the call mm. and she says, um, the president would like to Imagine speak to you. Imagine, I die. And I think, okay, it's not April because mm. I won in September, <laughs> so this could not be April. Okay. Um, and I do take the call. And on, on the other side of the line is Madiba's voice. And he says, congratulations, our mm. queen. We are very proud of you as South Africa. Mm. And uh, we will support you as wow. this government um, for, for winning this title because mm. you are representing a, a generation of young people who are looking up to you mm. and much is expected of you. And I, I hope that I did live up to that expectation. Wow. And I mean, the year before that, Jackie Mufugeng had yes. been then the first black Miss South Africa. Because in pre-1992, you um, weren't allowed. Black people were not allowed to enter Miss South Africa. And so Jackie wins in 1993. Mm. And I paid tribute to Jackie in my memoir because she truly paved the way for many of us. Um, and when she won, the vitriol um, that she was subjected to mm. by, by, by media, white media. Apparently um, they said, this is not our queen. This is not our queen. This is not who Miss South Africa looks like. Mm. And there was lots of insults that were hurled at her. Uh, but she was brave and she stood and she wore that crown with such dignity and grace throughout her reign. And so when I won in 1994, I think South Africans had begun to wrap their heads around mm. what beauty is what beauty is because the ideals of beauty have always been misconstrued mm. um, pre, you know, our democracy. Mm. Um, when you were fairer skin, you were considered mm. 
wanted mm. to be beautiful. I was but even this day, sorry, my angel, yes. even to this day, there's still the issue of colorism. Um, that when you're pretty and, uh, and you're, you're fair-skinned, skinned, uh, you're considered to be beautiful. Yeah. And so I think, you know, kudos to Jackie for rewriting that narrative mm. about black beauty. Um, and look at where we are this yeah. year. I mean, look at us, Zosie Bini who is exactly now a Miss Universe. Where I was going. You, I mean, how awesome is that's that? That's incredible. But you ought to give yourself a little bit more credit as well because you track back to not being allowed to be a finalist for Miss Soweto because the other contestants are saying you're too fair skin. You actually look like a colored person and then you have to do a pencil test. Listen, and the organizers of Miss Soweto actually had to go to my parents' home mm. for Soweto to actually see that my parents were actually black mm. um, because there was a, a, a riot with the contestants to say that no, 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 she can't enter Miss Soweto. She's colored. She's, she's you know, she's <laughs> fair skin. She yeah. has an a f- unfair advantage. And so, yeah, that pencil test was quite disconcerting. Um, here are these, you know, strangers. I mm. mean, to come to my home and to speak to my parents. Imagine. In, 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 to check. They can truly, yeah, um, you know, speak the language. When I read that story, literally, I had to pick my jaw up from the floor. That, 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 that's, that, that's our history. That's where we come from. But we've come so far but we still have so far to go of course because uh, you know what it made me realize is that apartheid is we we treat it on such a, a shallow level but it's, it's so deeply entrenched yeah. so deeply entrenched in and who rooted. we are yeah. and rooted because for s- small things like i mean colorism is something that's still very much uh, alive and it goes back to them letting us know who's better than who yeah and you think about that i mean the apartheid system had really tried to in- indoctrinators, mm. even our psychology mm. between ourselves as mm. black people and divide us um, between amongst ourselves. Yeah. Next, we dive into the media mogul and how that came about. And you look at your journey and did you imagine that you'd be here? But wait, I can actually answer that. I remember there's a there's a part, uh, I wrote it down, but your dad, uh, oh, there it is, I found it. Your dad said uh, you were worthy and you were beautiful and you were talented and you could do anything you put your mind to. Living and with my dad and my mom, my mm. dad particularly, it was like living with your own motivational speaker. Wow. Papa every morning would affirm us and henceforth, um, we never had to seek validation, my sisters wow. and I, um, even my younger brother from the outside world. And so um, did I know when I was uh, a child in the household how my life would change or the trajectory of my life um, would change? No, but I knew that I was destined for greatness. Mm. Um, I knew that there is so much that life has to offer because, you know, at the age of 13, my father gave me my first book, uh, The Power of Positive Thinking mm. by Norman Vincent, Norman Vincent Peale. And, and so I grew up understanding how your thoughts create your reality. Yes. Um, and I'm a believer. Um, and so I knew that if I believed and I prayed, God does answer his prayer. What's profound, though, is you had no footsteps before you to show you the path that you've now created, which is just amazing. The next bit I'd like to touch on is um, your journey of entrepreneurship. I mean, that started off with, I mean, mom is a teacher, dad is a bus driver. So to bring extra income, we sell some sandwiches at Orlando Stadium while Mapagania and Keza Chiefs are, <laughs> you know. My entrepreneurial journey started in my mother's kitchen. Yeah. Um, my siblings and I used to make an assembly line, uh, making the sandwiches. My mom would butter the bread. Uh, Aus Lerato, my eldest sister, would mm. put in a filling. Uh, Baba would cut the bread. Me and my brother would cling wrap. I had, o- all of us had chores. Yeah. And we used to sell those sandwiches, yes, um, at a derby, Kualando Stadium, mm. when Chiefs and Pirates were playing. Um, my parents would post us at different... Um, so you're hosts. getting you're getting money from different angles. Listen, supplementing the family income <laughs> was, dad was a, very a collective <laughs> uh, effort, and, yeah. and, and 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 you know, um, my mother then uh, was the first black uh, woman to learn bricklaying, and from that you'd then, extend the houses. Yes, yes, and they started a construction company. Um, I mean, there's just so much that my parents did. I remember at the end of the month, Mama used to make these curtains. Mm. You know, in the middle of the night, she'd sit sit, sit on her single machine and just make these curtains. And then month end, and Ali Papa would go to Kwakwa mm. to sell these curtains. 
Um, there's so many things that I can think about that my parents were just so enterprising. Mm. Uh, they made sure we always, you know, had a roof over our heads, clothes on our back, food on the table, mm. uh, shoes on our feet. And, 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 and so for me, it runs in my DNA being yeah. an entrepreneur. I've always been self-employed. I've mm. never, you know, since I was age of 20, worked for anybody but myself. I've had some spectacular failures mm. in business, but I have never allowed that to deter me. Um, I've taken those as life lessons. Um, paying my school fees because I'll never repeat the same mistakes again. Also, how will you rise if you don't fall? Indeed. Dust yourself up and keep on moving. Yeah. How do you think um, your mom and dad would have felt about this book? I think, um, you know, when I finished writing it, I said a prayer and, um, and I could visualize them smiling from heaven. Yeah. Your story of um, your mom's passing had me absolutely uh, gutted. However, there was a part of me that felt like everything happens as it should and when um, it should. Um, without giving away too much of the book, are you willing to share that with us today? Yeah, well, it is in the book. Yeah. Um, my mother's passing was untimely. Um, my mom, one of her, her her dreams was to go to the State of the Nation address, the opening of Parliament. And uh, my sister and I, Johanna, uh, managed to make that happen. Um, in 2006 and um, and uh, sadly she then had a heart attack um, and she had to have a triple valve replacement operation. My mother's cardiologist was uh, the famous Vaude Basson who as we all know um, had uh, a mission to annihilate us as black people mm. and um, and so to have Vota operating on my mom um, if you ask me how we all felt sitting outside the hospital operating theater. I, 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 I cannot begin to imagine to tell you. I can't begin to imagine. Um, we prayed, we cried, and and um, the reality is that um, he gave my mom a chance to live. Um, and my mother's life was taken by an intern, um, a locum, who, when Mama went, uh, her driver took her to the hospital for her nibs. Um, and um, decided that, you know, my mom was very, very much uh, a woman of, of, of minimal means and I got a fella overall and her mm. flip flops. And this doctor said, my mama told him what she needed and said, no, but I'm the doctor. Also, I'll... she's had this condition for many years. so she's... And she knew exactly what, you know, she required. Yeah. And this locum um, decided, no, I'm the doctor. I will drip you and I'll give you the medication that I think you need. And she even made it very clear to, to this um, young man um, that uh, I've just had, a, you know, a triple valve replacement up. So... The medication that I'm on um, is is not one you know that needs to be tempered with. Mm. And long story short, she was um, dripped up and given this um, medication that basically, at long story short, um, perforated her heart, and um, and she didn't make it. And she called my sister Johanna, and she said to her, um, "Listen, baby girl, I'm not going to make it. Mm. Um, this is what happened. Paul, who was her driver, brought me in, and um, they." They gave me medication and I'm battling to breathe and uh, I don't think I'm going to make it. And so, uh, and she asked that, please take me back to Vota Basson to help me. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't move her from, from the hospital. And Patience, my partner, I was in Job at that particular day. Mm. Um, Patience, so she rushed, she's she in rushed, Cape Town. She's in Cape Town. She rushed to the hospital. She picked up such a fuss that if we don't put Mrs. Makhalimele in, in this ambulance, and there were ambulances, mm. and she kept on begging to say, you know, um, you need to move me. She called Johanna. She called me and says, you need to move me fast because I'm not going to make it. Mm. And by the time patients uh, arrived, she had had her first heart attack. And then when they put her um, in the ambulance, she had a second heart attack. And by the time she got to um, the heart hospital, um, she she literally, patient tells me that she was still conscious. And, um, and I said, please put the phone on her ear so I can speak to her. And page, I could hear there was pandemonium, you know. Doctors, you could just hear yeah. that it was chaos. And patients put uh, Mutter on, on the phone and uh, and I told her, I love you and thank you for everything you've done for us. And then I could hear patients being shot, you know, being pushed out of... Uh, I'm sorry. Um, and she said, uh, Basi, she nodded. She heard you. So... Um, 
and she it was just a month before we could bring back home you know her her her, her society her mm. her friends were waiting for her comeback and we had planned a big um you know i think a lot of the time for her when she arrived back home and she never she never made it back home a lot of the time when we lose loved ones it's it's we'll it's never in a perfect way it's never in a perfect timing and i, I can't imagine how much anger your family must have felt through that entire ordeal but there's so much strength in you letting it go and not even fighting that we wanted to as my siblings we discussed it at great length um because you know her files started you know went missing yeah the very locum um because mama explained that he's slight in frame uh he's wearing specs he's tall he's thin mm. they made him disappear because we even asked the cleaners at the hospital that was there a locum like that so, yeah 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 no he was here but he's you know they have moved him um and we thought you know what what, what good is that going to do it's not going to bring her back uh, to sue the hospital we'll be in the courts forever and uh, and we asked her so what would mutter want she mm. would just want us to Continue. find our peace yeah. um and let her rest in peace mm. and so then we said you know we want we want we want to take the matter further um yeah thank you for being honest today thank you for being honest in the book thank you for being hmm a beacon of light a beacon of strength thank you for setting steps that we never knew existed uh, we thank god for you i thank god for you thank you so much tando thank you five f m watch five fm tv on youtube at five fm